Chapter 1071 Devil's Realm Hansen was shocked. The black mist grew to swallow the entire area. Inside, his Dongshan aura had been throttled, and its effective radius had been brought down to a mere 10 meters. What the H asterisk LL is going on? Where am I? Hansen examined the area and stumbled towards the first building he could see. Hansen could not make out anything in that mist, but he could see this one building as clear as day. It was visible, and yet it must have been at least 100 meters away. Hansen poked around his current vicinity, but he could not find anything worthwhile in the midst of that black fog. I should have waited for Xie Qing King and allowed him to take the Spirit Stone. Hansen had gone for the Spirit Stone first to see whether or not Holy Sword Emperor would obey him. The Spirit had gleefully opted to kill himself, which unnerved Hans Sr. Suddenly, the sound of a baby crying emanated across the black choked cobbles around him. It was spooky, and it immediately made both him and Bao alert. The red bird was disturbed, too. It tucked its head into Bao's clothing, prompting her to say, It's okay. Don't be afraid. Suddenly, a monkey with wings appeared before them through the darkness. It was veiled in a shroud of deeper black, and it did not look too different from the super creature they had encountered in Holy Sword's shelter. As it came closer, Hansen was able to sense that it was different, though. This one was only a sacred blood creature. Hansen pulled out his phoenix sword and spared no time in swiping it against the monkey's claws. Effortlessly, they were sliced off, squirting inky blood. The monkey was aggressive right off the bat, so Hansen had to react accordingly. Following its bloody nail cutting, the monkey then tried to lunge forward and capture Hansen in its fanged mouth. Catcha! Hansen swung his sword again and lopped its head off. Sacred blood creature ghost Fong killed. No beast soul gained. Consume its flesh to gain 0 to 10 sacred geno points randomly. This must be the same type of monster I saw back in Holy Sword Shelter. I've unwittingly stepped into another realm of sorts, but I can only suspect it to be a place Holy Sword Emperor himself has been in before. And if he was able to come here and later leave, I should be able to do the same. Hansen mulled his current predicament in his head. Brother Seven once told Hansen that one of the creatures of Holy Sword Shelter swore allegiance to Holy Sword Emperor because it had been saved once upon a time. Now that Hansen thought about it, he guessed it might have been that monkey. Hansen returned his attention to the statue before him. He reevaluated it and came to the conclusion that it wasn't a jolly woman as he had initially guessed it to be. The ears of the humanoid statue were pointy and she had wings and a tail that ended like an arrowhead. It looked like the common depiction of a devil or succubus. Hansen tried to contact Moment Queen for assistance, but he was unable to. This told him that this location was not ordinary and getting out would be a trial. He fingered the Dragon Blood Ring and summoned Dragon King. Dragon King was weak, and when he spawned, he appeared as nothing more than a scrawny little dragon that hovered in circles. My power fades every time you summon me, Dragon King said, but then said nothing more. His attention had been immediately snagged by the statue in front of them. Dragon King exclaimed to Hansen, DM in it. Why are you here? I'm interested in knowing where here is, first and foremost. Dragon King seemed to be familiar with the location, which was good news for Hans Sr. Get out of here. You must go at once. Dragon King pleaded with worry. How? I don't know how to leave, Hansen explained. What do you mean you don't know how? Dragon King was visibly panicked and he swiftly moved on to ask, Then, how did you get here in the first place? Hansen explained the events that had transpired in Holy Sword Shelter and what had led him up to this point. When he was done with his story, Dragon King looked surprised. Dragon King was no longer able to speak in hushed tones, it appeared. Again, he shouted, saying, That asterisk shoal is cruel. He used a devil orb to send you here. Oh well, I guess we better get comfy and await our inevitable deaths. He used a devil orb? To send me here to this, what would you call it? Devil realm? What is so special or unique about this place, exactly? Hansen asked. Special? Dragon King shook his head and prepared himself to explain. Back in the day. Dragon King's speech was abruptly cut short by some unknown force. Back in the day. What? Hansen asked. Look, you just need to know the danger you're in. This place harbors countless creatures, ones that are all hungry. There are also cracks in this dimension, Dragon King explained more succinctly. Hansen smiled in response, saying, You do know we are both in the same boat here, yes? By helping me, you're helping yourself get out of this mess. 
if you're hiding something from me. Dragon King seemed to ponder something for a moment. When he was ready to talk again, he said, this is ancient devil emperor's shelter. There was once a war, and one consequence of it was a shattering of the dimension. For some reason, the creatures in this place grew stronger and leveled up. Even in my prime, I would not dare venture here. Someone fought this ancient devil emperor so hard that this was the aftermath? Hansen asked in shock. Dragon King eyed the surroundings and said, This is the entrance of the shelter. Scale this statue that's in the image of a devil woman, and after a hundred thousand stairs, you will be inside the shelter in full. Unfortunately for you, the stairs have been destroyed. Chapter 1072, Devil Fawn What was the devil orb you spoke of? Hansen asked. Ancient devil shelter possessed a tree cultivated by an emperor. The tree itself was simply named Devil. If it bore fruit, it would have been able to create demonic dimensions. Unfortunately for ancient devil emperor, he was unable to find success in this venture. Dragon King paused briefly before resuming his speech. He took a deep breath and explained, This devil tree was destroyed during the war, but the wood of the tree splintered to form little devil orbs. When destroyed, these devil orbs contain the power to transport others to this devil's realm. Hansen was disappointed, learning the orbs were a one-way ticket. Again, though, he heard the distant sound of a baby cry. It was exactly the same as what he had heard earlier. Dragon King also heard the noise, and he told Hansen, Devil Fangs have found us. They remain in a constant shift of mutations. They could be super creatures. We should go. Hansen asked, Go where? Can we reach the shelter that is high above? Of course not. That is where the super creatures reside. Who knows how strong they have become? Dragon King preached. Then where in the sanctuaries can I go? Hansen asked. Dragon King did not know where they could go, either. There were cracks everywhere in the fabric of this dimension. They couldn't just flee senselessly. When a dimension gets distorted or twisted or broken, going in one direction could leave you going in another. Dragon King caught sight of a devil fong racing out from the black mist, but much to Han Sin's relief, he was able to gauge its strength as being only sacred blood in class. Suddenly, a dozen more raced out of the black. Their ravenous, hungry maws snapped towards Han Sr. Dragon King swiftly returned to his ring, but he couldn't be faulted for this. He really was in a state of weakness, and he'd have been unable to deal with a single one of the fiends, most likely. Hansen drew Taya and Phoenix sword and remained as fearless as ever. With Bauer and the bird atop his shoulders, he ran forward to greet the monsters. When a sword cleaved its way through a devil fong, green blood gushed from the fleshy crevices. Using double fly, Hansen was able to effortlessly slay four of them. The rest weren't waiting around, though. They were still coming. Even when Hansen hewed the limbs of the creatures off, they still wriggled their way forward for a taste of his fresh meat. Green blood started to form a pool around Hansen, and the level rose the more he killed. After killing a dozen of the devil fangs, their numbers were replenished with a greater sum that lurked in the darkness out of sight. Now, another fifty sought a taste of the human, but Hansen was unfazed. He carried on fighting as his clothes became drenched with the green blood. Even Bauer's face had been splashed with the stuff, which made her quite angry. Not happy with the constant soaking, Bauer brought out her mini-gourd and pointed it towards the monsters. The group of devil fangs that remained were immediately frightened by its power of suction, and they tried their best to scramble away to safety. But it was useless, and they were each and all sucked into the gourd. A few dozen devil fangs were sucked into the gourd in nearly an instant. Others that were thinking of taking their fallen brethren's places now had second thoughts, and they elected to stay away. Hansen was delighted as it had been a while since he had received Bauer's support. He kissed her and said, Good job. You make Daddy proud. I am good, Bauer said, with a smug grin. You are the best. Hansen looked to the devil fangs he himself killed. Then, he got a fire going so he could cook them. Hansen was starving after all the fighting, so now was a good time to cook and eat. While he ate, he could also mull his predicament and figure out how he might leave the realm. Devil fangs were ugly but the meat appeared similar to beef. So, they at least looked tasty. Hansen cooked it to the accompaniment of a mouth-watering sizzle. Bawa sat down near the fire, watching as the meat slowly roasted. It'll be done in a sec. Hansen wielded his makeshift cookery like an artisan. He seared the meat perfectly, and a tantalizing aroma rose under his expert hands. He brought out a crate of salts and spices. With a sprinkle here and there, 
The energizing scent deepened, and it got their tongues wagging for a taste. Devil Fong meat consumed. Sacred Geno points plus one. After Hansen took a bite, he heard the announcement and was happy. He looked over to Bauer and the bird and saw them nibbling and pecking with delight at a portion of the meat. After eating a slab of the meat, Hansen was full. But Bauer and the bird were able to consume five slabs. Devil Fangs continued to howl out somewhere in the darkness. They were too afraid to come any closer, but still, Hansen thought it was rather strange for him and his companions to dine comfortably with danger not too far away. He had managed to get four sacred Geno points from the meal, which placed him at the number 70. Soon, he believed, he'd max out the tally in full. This might end up working out, after all. I'd say it's a lucky thing for me to end up here. This realm is full of easy kills, and if my good fortune holds out, I might even be able to slay a super creature, too. Heaven knows I need more of those Geno points, Hansen thought to himself. The sounds of howling grew closer over time, though. Eventually, Hansen was able to catch a glimpse or two of the creatures, lurking in the darkness. But suddenly, that was the least of their concerns. A giant, Red Devil Fong came storming out of the black. It raised its blood wings and stared down at the fireside trio. Chapter 1073, Disloyal Knights Coming a super creature? Hansen stood up and set himself ablaze with red fire. He spread his black raven wings and transformed into a gold raven. Then, he immediately flew towards the red devil fong. Ping! The raven firebird's talons collided with the red devil fong's claws to create a sound like clashing metal. The impact of both forces formed a tear in the dimension they occupied. Hansen frowned, unable to believe nothing came of his strike. Their strengths were similar, it seemed. Then, they both went at each other with manic ferocity. Buildings and structures were toppled and destroyed in the midst of their fight. As Hansen's fire incinerated the realm and fought back the heart-chilling terror the ape sought to inflict. The Devil Fong bled green and Hansen bled red, but both were painting the environment in an unholy mixture. Who would win was still up for debate. The Devil Fong here was certainly stronger than the one they had encountered back in Holy Sword Shelter. Its mere presence was sickening and its intimidating behavior was corrosive to one's resoluteness and confidence. Hansen's gold raven and blood pulse sutra worked overtime in a bid to fight it back. Unfortunately, Hansen wouldn't be able to remain in his shape-shifted form forever, and with the rate he was losing energy, it was only a matter of time before he lost. Hansen readied himself to use his super king spirit and slay the beast before anything worse occurred, but suddenly, he heard a wicked noise coming from within his sea of soul. He looked inside and saw that his disloyal knight, which had been in the process of evolving for quite some time now, was ready. It was ready to engage battle mode. Huh, that's some good timing. Hansen summoned his disloyal knight. The disloyal knight was summoned, and like a stoic hero plated in copper armor, it promptly appeared before Han Sr. The devil Fong was not swayed by the presence of another fighter, though. It let out another shrill, baby-like cry and ran forward to engage Disloyal Knight. Disloyal Knight looked cold as it leaped into the air, its black hair waving. Beneath its feet, a halo appeared. It was expanding. The halo stretched like an arrow, until its farthest end struck the Devil Fong. No damage was dealt directly, but that touch had a debilitating effect on the Devil Fong. The devilish, intimidating presence that worked like an actual debuff was lessened, and the creature moved at a slower pace. Boom. Disloyal Knight's fist collided against the Devil Fong's claws, and the winner of that clash was clear. The Devil Fong went flying back a dozen meters. In the next second, Disloyal Knight teleported beside the fallen Devil Fong and punched the beast repeatedly. Disloyal Knight's focus on pounding the Devil Fong's face was unnerving, and it drove punch after punch of wretched force into the writhing beast that struggled to strike back with its claws. Hansen was shocked, to say the least. Disloyal Knight was suffering multiple lesions from the claws that cut against it, but it was unaffected. It maintained its position, driving its fist into the pinned Devil Fong's face over and over again. Eventually, the ape's flesh had been pulverized and beaten away, exposing bone to the fierce new barrage of punches. It wasn't long until the bones were snapped like twigs. Green blood gushed out of the wounds and coursed over the ruined flesh that had been smashed like fruit pulp. Seeing the powerful disloyal knight put on such a cruel display, Hansen could not help but feel disappointed. He thought to himself, why was disloyal knight not a shape-shifting beast's soul? 
That would be amazing. Particularly so, since I could make use of Taya and Phoenix Sword. I'd kill that thug monster effortlessly. Now, Hansen realized why Disloyal Knight chose not to avoid the scratches it was given. The Halo had sapped the Devil Fong of much of its power, and so the attacks delivered upon Disloyal Knight were fairly minor. And the attacks only got weaker, too, the more injured the Devil Fong became. The Devil Fong writhed and screamed. It got free and attempted to fly off and return to the depths of the Black Mists. Not keen to let it go, Hansen flew after it. The Devil Fong was much slower now, though. Hansen struck with his sword and lopped off a whole region of the fleeing beast's flesh to expose the skeleton inside. Even its hide was weakened. Disloyal Knight is frighteningly strong. Hansen was exuberantly happy following Disloyal Knight's performance. Now, he no longer had to fear super creatures. Devil Fong then came under the brutal oppression of Hansen's and Disloyal Knight's combined attacks. The final blow came from Hansen, who ripped out the monster's heart. He grabbed, squeezed, and pulled it directly out of the creature's chest. Super creature Devil Fong King killed. Beast soul gained. The flesh of this creature is edible, and you may harvest its life geno essence. Consume its life geno essence to gain 0 to 10 super geno points randomly. Hansen was delighted. He would have been happy just to receive the flesh and life geno essence, but he had also managed to obtain the beast soul. I hope it's a flying beast soul. With wings, even if I wasn't a bird, I can still make use of my phoenix techniques and arrow, Hansen prayed. The gold raven beast soul was good, but he wasn't entirely used to it yet. It was difficult getting the knack of it, and he always preferred maintaining his human appearance, anyway. Hansen checked his sea of soul. When he saw what was written, he was surprised. Super beast soul devil fong king. Badge type. What is a badge type beast soul? This was the first time Hansen had received such a thing so he had no clue what it was. Hansen summoned the beast soul, and a red devilish badge appeared in the palm of his hand. It wasn't remarkable to look at, but it exuded a certain aura of evil. Chapter 1074, Golden Growler's Evolution Hansen cradled the devil fong badge in the palm of his hand, wondering what use it could serve. It did seem powerful, but there was no apparent utility. It could not be used as a weapon, and it was certainly too small to be used as a shield. He wanted to spend some time researching it, but the red bird was hungry again. It had already flown over to the corpse of the Devil Fong King and begun pecking away at it. Within seconds, it had managed to gobble up an entire arm, bone included. Quickly, Hansen ran up to the bird and pulled it away. He was afraid it would eat the life geno essence. With his phoenix sword, Hansen dug up the black orb from its inside. He was quite excited about this, as it had been a long time since he had last received one. He cooked some of the flesh, but found it impossible to eat. Humans were unable to consume the flesh of super creatures, but Hansen always thought it was worth a shot. Affirming his inability to eat it, Hansen offered it to Bauer and the Redbird. Bauer's reaction was similar to Hansen's. Upon having a taste, she threw it up. The Redbird was strangely ravenous. Within moments of being given a leg, it had munched it all and swallowed it. He didn't want the bird to eat it all, though. Hansen summoned Golden Growler and Meowth and bid that they have some to eat, as well. They really seemed to enjoy it. Meowth paced the bites and ate slowly, whereas Golden Growler stuck his nose in the food and ate like a wild, hungry animal. It wasn't long before no scrap or morsel of the Devil Fong remained. The Red Bird ate the most, Golden Growler had a fair share, and Meowth ate the least. Hansen wanted to put Golden Growler and Meowth back inside the Sea of Soul after that. But all of a sudden, Golden Growler began to shine like a torch of light. Before Hansen could do anything, it returned itself to the Sea of Soul. Is Golden Growler evolving? Hansen was more than surprised. Hansen believed Golden Growler was quite a special creature. After Little Angel ate Golden Growler, she grew and evolved quickly. The beast soul Hansen received was a mountable one. Mount beast souls could not eat like pet beast souls could, but Golden Growler strangely could. Mount Beast Souls weren't ones to attack, either, yet Golden Growler did. Hansen had been feeding it some good stuff, like the water drops, and had witnessed a few changes to its body over time. But they weren't extravagant or immediately noticeable transformations. After eating Devil Fong King, though, it was as if something had been unlocked. And with this lock having been broken, it was like the creature could now evolve. Hansen did not know what to expect from its evolution, 
or what it would become, but regardless, it was a good thing. He was eager to see the results. It did not really matter, though. As with Meowth, Hansen treated Golden Growler like little more than a mascot. For now, Hansen chose to leave Golden Growler alone. He simulated the Devil Fong King's energy flow and absorbed the life geno essence. Hansen's mood had been repeatedly caught on a snag lately. His Dongshin Sutra's open gene lock amount was too low, he believed, and this was truer than ever right now, as he was unable to simulate Devil Fong King's energy flow well. This was because Devil Fong King had nine open gene locks, and as a result, the refinement process was very slow. After an hour passed, Hansen had only managed to absorb the outermost layer of the orb. He hadn't even been able to receive a single geno point yet. He guessed it would take an entire month to refine the life geno essence, and that was only if he focused on absorbing it 24-7. Well, it's better than nothing. Hansen was still moderately satisfied. After packing, Hansen picked up Bauer and allowed Disloyal Knight to lead the way. It was high time they got out of there, Hansen thought. So that was their aim right now. With Disloyal Knight, Hansen was no longer afraid of super creatures. If one thought to try its luck against them, he believed they could wipe it out without any trouble. The black mist was as thick as ever, and it hung in the air like mucus. It stifled Hansen's Dongshan aura, and only allowed him to see 10 meters ahead. Every now and again, a Devil Fong would show itself. Sacred Blood Devil Fangs were supremely easy to defeat and that was down to the power and precision of his phoenix sword. After eliminating one, Hansen felt the Devil Fong King go crazy inside the Sea of Soul. Hansen summoned it, and immediately, it flew over to the body of the slain Devil Fong. A black mist then drifted out of the Devil Fong's body and into the badge. Then, it was gone. Hansen retrieved the badge and noticed something different about it this time. Inscribed upon it was the number, one. He checked its information out again and saw there were some changes. Super Beast Soul Devil Fong King. Badge type. Devil Presence plus one. Collect 10,000 to trade with Devil King. What is Devil King? And trade? Trade what? Hansen had no idea what he was reading. Regardless of what it meant, Hansen now knew the badge had to be useful. He had killed one Devil Fong to obtain one Devil Presence. If the ratio was truly one to one, then that meant Hansen had to kill 10,000 of the blighters. That's a crazy grind, but if I keep killing what I see along the way, perhaps I'll have slain enough. Hansen only said this to comfort himself, though. Killing 10,000 of anything was too difficult, not to mention boring. The Devil Fangs were sacred blood creatures at the very least, and if they were keen to remain hidden inside the black mist, there was nothing Hansen could do, anyway. Hansen now decided to pin the badge to his chest. Whenever the chance to kill one arose, he would do it. And just like before, the Devil Presence would appear as some sort of dark mist and drift towards the badge to be absorbed. Hansen decided to fly around, and after eight hours of doing that, he was able to kill another twenty Devil Fangs. Unfortunately, he had not been able to obtain a single other beast soul. This got Hansen thinking. If the Devil Fong King badge absorbed the Devil Presence, perhaps there'd be no beast soul for him to get. While this was rather lame, he was glad he was still able to eat the corpses. While he couldn't eat much at a time, he stuffed his face with what he could and moved on from each kill. The bird made sure to grab a mouthful every time one was killed, too. All of a sudden, though, Hansen's face changed. He saw the copper devil woman statue ahead of him again, and he wondered whether or not he had ended up walking in a circle. But this time, a black shadow stood atop the statue's head. The presence's life force looked like a raging bonfire of power, and its magnitude was not too far off of Xie Chang King's. Chapter 1075, Ancient Devil Bell It was difficult to tell what creature sought to confront them this time. It was gray like steel, and its back had a shield that was similar to that of a turtle's shell. It reached down to its tail, which was shaped like a drill. The head of the creature possessed a curved horn. The claws were sharp, and they lined up like a vanguard of spears. Whatever it was, it was sitting upon the head of the Devil Woman statue. It looked at Hansen and Disloyal Knight, presenting a creepy smile. Boom. The creature jumped and appeared directly before Hans Senator with its fingers raised. It tried to penetrate Hansen's chest and seize his heart. Disloyal Knight ran up with its halo active and delivered a punch to the creature. Dong. When Disloyal Knight's fist came into contact with the creature's armor, his fist was knocked back. It started to bleed with the force of his proposed punch. 
The creature on the receiving end had not suffered any pain from the powerful blow. Hansen turned into a golden raven once again, but this did not phase their latest foe. It didn't attempt to dodge any attack Hansen brought against it, and instead, it just continued its attempts to slice and dice him. The gold raven's talons were incredibly sharp, but they did nothing to the creature. And upon delivering a powerful strike to the creature, he was the one who ended up bleeding, just like disloyal knight. Hansen was surprised to see that the bulk of the super creature's strength resided in the defense provided by its armor. He tried to burn the metal of its armor, but the flames had no more effect than a water splash. The body of the creature was like a hedgehog, and already, they were having trouble touching it. Although its speed and power were weak, that meant nothing if neither Hansen nor Disloyal Knight was able to take advantage of this fact and damage it. If Hansen was in his human form, he could use his Teya and Phoenix Sword. But even then, Hansen wagered he'd still be too weak to deal damage. Not even that weaponry would even the odds. Disloyal Knight, on the other hand, had no weapons. Beast souls were not like spirits, and so they could not make use of beast souls. As a result, Disloyal Knight had to use its fists. Still, Hansen decided to return to his human form. He landed atop the head of the statue and watched from above as the two duked it out. Because the creature had been weakened by Disloyal Knight's halo, the damage it could deliver was not substantial. Hansen frowned and observed the creature. He repeatedly scanned it, trying to determine if there was a weak spot he could exploit. But if there was one, it was hidden well. The armor had multiple layers, all of which were wound tightly around each other. No weapon could manage to fit through the gaps. Aside from its lack of ranged attacks, the creature was perfect, Hansen thought. It was a born killer he'd very much fancy. If Disloyal Knight hadn't deployed its debuff on the creature, one punch from that fiend would be enough to end anyone or anything, Hansen believed. It was like a one-man phalanx. The claws were like a wall of lances, whereas the tail was one that lashed from the rear. No shield or armor could withstand strikes from such a front. While Hansen was lost in thought, the sound of a bell rung from ancient devil's shelter. It startled Hansen back to reality. It was not a sharp noise, but it traveled softly and solemnly through the black to reach his ears. He liked the sound, and its ringing made him think of an old monk ringing a bell in some faraway monastery. When the super creature heard the noise, it gave up the fight and darted back towards ancient devil's shelter. Hansen was surprised by this sudden shift in behavior so he summoned Dragon King and asked him, Dragon King, what is that bell? Dragon King remained silent for a moment, with his ears to the sky. When he heard the bell, his silence was shattered by a horrified scream. He shouted, Impossible. How is it ringing? Hansen, seeing the spirit behave like this, frowned. He asked, Just tell me, what is this ancient devil bell that's ringing? Dragon King stared up towards the shelter and pleaded to Hansen, Go to the shelter and be quick about it. Care to tell me what's going on exactly? Hansen did not budge. He wasn't going to risk life or limb, acting on Dragon King's empty words. He wasn't the most truthful fellow, after all. They had just had trouble dealing with a single creature, and Hansen could not be sure how many more of that power level may have resided in the shelter. Dragon King himself told Hansen there were many wretched things residing in that place. Before he acted on his sudden change of mind, Hansen wanted to know why. Dragon King said, quick? When the bell stops, we will no longer be able to enter. Get moving and I'll explain on the way, but trust me, please. I really don't want to hurt you. Hansen didn't entirely believe him, as he used to work for Ancient Devil Emperor. He probably knew a lot more than he was letting on, and there was always the chance he could make use of this knowledge to manipulate Hansen into being forced to relinquish control of him. Dragon King was clearly in a rush, though. He said, it will only ring 72 times. Once it is rung that many times, the shelter will close. Once it is closed, we will be unable to enter. Then you better explain to me what's up there. Tell me, so I can decide my next course of action, Hansen said. Dragon King looked ready to explain, but suddenly, a large group of devil fangs flew towards them. Hansen's face changed, and so he drew his sword and prepared for another fight. But strangely, they did not stop near him. They flew overhead and went towards ancient devil's shelter. The ancient devil bell is for the emperor to go to Qi Ling. The bell is a Geno treasure. When it rings, it provides a window in which the creatures will not seek to harm any living thing. Trust me on this, now is the time to go. Go before it is too late, 
Dragon King explained. Chapter 1076, Creature Meat Hanston was wary about the idea of going, but he ended up deciding to do as Dragon King pleaded. He decided to go to Ancient Devil Shelter. He didn't entirely believe Dragon King, but the creatures were indeed behaving strangely at the sound of that bell, and they were all headed in the same direction. Aside from the Devil Fangs, Hansen noticed many more creatures heading that way, too. They looked possessed, mindlessly going there. Hansen was stuck inside that realm, so he thought he might as well go with them to see what was going on and test his luck. Besides, Hansen still had firm control of Dragon King, and he did not believe the spirit could do anything to change that fact. Hansen flew towards the buildings, far beyond the black mist, and as he was going, asked, What is that chilling you mentioned? Unless you were born powerful, most spirits and creatures share the same fate as humans in the sanctuary. They have to practice, train, fight, and learn in order to grow and open their gene locks. Once you have reached your seventh gene lock, though, things become much harder. Dragon King went on to say, the ancient devil bell can rinse their souls. While the emperor is present, each time it rings, creatures and spirits benefit immensely. If they have not unlocked seven of their gene locks, hearing the 72 bell tolls can result in the learning and opening of an additional two. Above seven? Well, that just depends on your luck. That sounds too good to be true. And maybe it is. Why has it not worked on me? Hansen scoffed at the thought. You are already so strong. And with the distance of the bell, it is no wonder why it has not worked, Dragon King said. If it's useless for me, then why must you implore that I go there? Hansen still did not believe Dragon King. But Dragon King said, while ancient devil emperor still occupied that place, the ringing of the bell signified he was going to test the genes of others. Gene testing? Hansen wasn't quite sure what he meant. Humans had technology to gauge the strength and level of people's genes but he had never heard of spirits and creatures being able to do the same. Hansen then conjured the image of a creepy uncle spirit, bringing a pretty, young spirit to a dark house, saying, Come, let me examine your genes. Holy sh asterisk t. Is ancient devil emperor some sort of pervert? Hansen couldn't help but speak this out loud. Dragon King looked confused, and he asked, Pervert? Who's a pervert? What are you talking about? Oh, nothing. Um. Keep going. Tell me about all this gene testing. Hansen had no idea why he started thinking of the things he just had. Dragon King then went on to say, through an examination, he was able to determine the flaws of someone's genes. He then provided advice on how to fix any discovered problems and how they might gain greater strength. What's perverted about that? Nothing. That all sounds good. Hansen coughed twice to hide his embarrassment over the outburst. Then, he shuffled the conversation along by saying, Now that he's gone, there's nobody there to run the test anymore. Isn't that correct? Why do the creatures still go there? The bell is a treasure. If it wasn't destroyed in the war, it should have been taken. But it is still there, ringing loudly. Dragon King was in deep thought. The bell, by now, had rung almost fifty times. Hansen was getting close, though, and he could make out the structure and buildings that composed the shelter. It was like a grand palace built atop the peak of a mountain. There were supposed to be stairs leading up to the shelter, but they had been broken. Only fifty steps of the staircase remained, down near the bottom. The palace was in poor condition, too. But despite its ravaged exterior, Hansen could determine how grand and luxurious it must have been, once upon a time. Many creatures flew past Hans Sound, not displaying a single ounce of hostility towards him. All along the palace walls, and assembled on the palace grounds were legions of creatures. They all stood still, not making a single noise. The ancient devil bell is a treasure of that emperor. Its ringing requires something special. It is not operated via a rope, so it's not something any person can do. And since all the creatures came here, just maybe, Dragon King said. Maybe what? Hansen asked. Dragon King did not respond, so Hansen flew high above the shelter. Looking down, he saw a hundred thousand creatures inside the shelter. The weakest creatures could only claim a spot on the rooftops or were relegated to the shelter's walls. The strongest creatures were the ones closest to the palace. Creatures like devil fangs were situated atop the wall that circled the palace, as they weren't very strong. Inside the palace, Hansen saw six creatures. He saw the armored creature amongst them. These six were inside the palace and seemed to possess some manner of authority. 
There was a distance separating them from the other creatures, who all had to remain outside. Hansen checked out the other five creatures. One had a mostly humanoid shape, save for its tiger head, for legs, and wings. Its body was mostly black, like obsidian, but glyph-like creaks of lava ran across its joints. This monster was holding a great axe, which was as big as a house. To the left of this creature, there was a red dog with two heads. The heads possessed horns. One head had one horn, whereas the other head had two. The dog with two horns breathed ice, whereas the dog with one horn breathed fire. Chapter 1077 Cheating Bower To the right of the tiger humanoid monster stood a hydra. It was a hundred meters tall, and it possessed four wings. Each serpent head had a horn. Next to the hydra was a white sheep, whose wool was fluffy like the clouds of the sky. Back on the left, besides the red dog, there was a man. He was sitting, and there were devil-like wings on his back. He was clad in purple armor, but the wings wrapped him up like a blanket, obscuring most of the details of his form. Hansen could not see his face, but he already knew the man was not human. Hansen did not know this because of the strange life force this figure possessed, nor the wings he owned, but because he had four arms. The additional two came from under his armpits. It was a humanoid creature with four arms, and each hand held a black sword. Those creatures, along with the steel armor-clad creature Hansen had engaged earlier, comprised the line of six inside the palace. There was plenty of space around them, but none of the creatures outside dared get closer. Hansen saw a red devil fong sitting upon the tiled rooftop of a building and noted how it looked exactly like the devil fong king he had slain earlier. It was most certainly a super creature. Even it, a super creature of remarkable strength, was afraid to go near the palace. The fact that it kept its distance spoke volumes for how fearsome those inside might have been. Hansen landed on the ramparts of the shelter and observed the palace. There was a stone platform in the middle of the palace. A black bell stood atop it. This was the bell that was tolling, drawing all creatures to the shelter. Hansen examined it from where he was, surprised to see how crude and unrefined the bell was. Its making looked coarse, as if it were hastily forged from basic steel. Had he not seen it now, in this setting, Hansen would not have guessed it was a prized Geno treasure left behind by an emperor spirit. Were it an antique that he had just come into possession of, he'd have tossed it into the trash without a second thought. Many more creatures were still on their way to the shelter, and when they arrived, placed themselves in a position according to their power. And of course, like before, none tried to join the six inside the palace. The bell finally stopped tolling, and when it did, the mist that cloaked the area became much darker and much thicker. Hansen could no longer see the statue they had left behind. Dragon King, what is this? Hansen asked, after seeing the creatures remain still and unchanged, following the end of the bells ringing. Hang on, do not make a sound, Dragon King whispered harshly. Hansen then looked around and noticed many creatures were staring at him. He immediately stopped talking. He didn't want to risk invoking their ire, for if he were attacked now, survival would be nothing more than a fool's hope. Bao seemed annoyed by something. She leaped down from Han Sen's clutch and used the creatures below as stepping stones she could hop along. She was going directly to the center of the palace. Are you trying to get me killed? Hansen ran after Bauer, hoping he could stop her. Don't go. Dragon King's call rung with the sound of shock and desperation. Hansen ignored the plight, though. He forced Dragon King to come with him and continued his pursuit of Bauer. But Bauer was too fast for him, as usual. She had successfully hopped across the heads of each creature and entered the palace before Hansen could catch up. The six super creatures all looked at Bauer strangely, and as Hansen saw all their eyes drift towards her, he couldn't help but think, Bauer, you're going to get us killed. Bauer was not afraid in the least, though, and she just waddled towards the white fluffy sheep. When she reached it, she jumped up onto the perplexed creature's back and began to roll and bounce in its fluffy wool. Dragon King was trembling as Hansen approached them. He was not terrified. Instead, he was utterly infuriated with Bauer's behavior. Hansen had a cold sweat as he entered the palace, and when he was in, he tiptoed over to Bauer to pick her up. I'm sorry. She is a naughty girl, I know. I will teach her better after this. Hansen smiled as he chirped an apology before the line of mighty creatures. Just as Hansen started to walk back out, Bao escaped his grasp again. She swiftly returned to the white sheep's back and said, Daddy, this is fun. 
His heart began to pound like a hammer on stone. He felt as if he was going to suffer a heart attack before any super creature even had the chance to maul him to death with Bowers' insufferable behavior. Dragon King merely looked depressed, believing it was only a matter of time before the super creatures were angered and decided to murder them. Then the super creatures who were staring at Bower averted their gazes. Even though the white sheep was being used as a baby trampoline, it only glanced at them briefly. Hansen and Dragon King could hardly believe what they were seeing. Dragon King in particular, who had a far better idea of what such creatures might be capable of, was stunned to see them only look and turn away. Their lack of action confused him. He had no clue why Bower was given such treatment, when even a once-renowned spirit such as himself never had been. Hansen was starting to get used to it by now, however. Bower was strange, and despite her meddling, she never seemed to invoke the anger of creatures or spirits. Hansen wasn't willing to jump on the sheep's back like Bower, but he was satisfied enough to learn he could remain inside the palace without being attacked. Eventually, Dragon King's nerves calmed down, and Bower went asleep atop the sheep. Is she really your daughter? Dragon King asked in a strained whisper, not daring to alert the super creatures. Hansen was going to answer, but before he could, the platform in the center of the palace began to shine. It shone so brightly, he struggled to keep his eyes open. And then, a strange presence emerged. Chapter 1078 This is not my road. After a minute of blinding brilliance, the light started to fade to a more bearable level. And as Hansen looked its way, a demonic voice began to boom from within the glow. Within the light, Hansen saw the faint outline of a strong man. He was sitting and speaking. The demonic voice was surreal to hear. It was of a language Hansen could not recognize, and although that meant he should not have been able to understand what was spoken, he somehow could. When this light appeared, the attentiveness of all the creatures stiffened. They turned to look at the luminance keenly. They were all like well-disciplined and obedient students at school, and while the scene was a serious one, the sight was not without a measurement of grin-bearing silliness. Dragon King was in too much shock to speak, and he looked absolutely mortified. Seeing spirits of the dead come to attack would not warrant such fright, Hansen believed. He wished to ask what was happening, but Hansen refrained from doing so. He imagined the consequences could be dire if he dared disturb the creatures now. Hansen then chose to try and satiate his curiosity himself. He perked his ears and tried to listen to what the demonic voice was saying. The six super creatures, and all the other creatures present, were in a trance-like state as they listened. The language was a strange one. When Hansen tried to analyze the form of the words deeply, he could not understand a thing. But when he listened to it lightly, as if it were background music, he could understand it clearly. Every word and its meaning were as clear as a bell. Hansen looked towards the light and kept on listening. He was surprised by his own attentiveness. As he heard the words spoken, he felt a new strength course through his body. If the powers in his veins were like the babbling brooks of a mountainside, they were now comparable to roaring rapids. Hansen's energy combined with this power, becoming one. Boom. The Dongshin Sutra suddenly opened a new gene lock, much to his utter shock. And that power resided there without lessening. It marched towards the next gene lock. Hansen felt two different powers overwhelm him. The light itself was one aspect of this, and it made him feel grossly incandescent. It glowed around him, but it did not enter his body. The other power came from the demonic language. This penetrated him deeply, and it was like a qi gong that drew the exterior power, which was born on the light inside. This strange strength combined with the strength that already resided within Hansen, and the might of both forces were swift to break down another gene lock. Hansen had no clue who was inside that light, who could impart so much power with the glow and a few words, but he was immeasurably thankful. He had oh so easily improved his Dongxian Sutra by a large amount. Hansen turned to look at all the other creatures behind him and noticed they too were wrapped in the same glow that caressed him. The creatures behind him were also having their gene locks opened. With that holy light around them, heaven knew how many gene locks they were opening. There was no need for more Geno fruits or Geno flesh, and there was no need for practice, either. Basking in that warming glow and hearing the words spoken was enough to knock down Gene locks with ease. But Hansen felt something wrong or amiss with this. While the light had been able to open his Gene locks, it wasn't in a manner he wished for them to be unlocked. More and more of that power penetrated Hansen, and it began to overwhelm his own strength. 
He was helpless, feeling the demonic influence usurp his own inner power. This isn't right. Hansen wanted to stop the power from penetrating him and disconnect himself from it. But Hansen could not stop it, and it was within him, dictating his own energy flow. Katcha. Another gene lock was opened, and the power was incredibly strong. Hansen could feel the power getting stronger and stronger, and while he could still feel the gene locks breaking, he wasn't happy. Hansen wasn't the smartest man alive, but at least he was honest. He wasn't one to deny help, but he wanted to command his ascension and progression of power. What was happening right now did not sit right with him. And it wasn't just that. It was how this demonic power penetrated him without permission that offended him the most. It had come inside and replaced his own power, making his own little more than an add-on. He was not entirely himself. The power from that light was taking over, and there was nothing he could do to prevent its intrusion. It was like he had been forced to learn a mathematical equation or formula, and the demonic language in his head taught him how. It was a way to become stronger, and it had indeed worked. But if he did not learn the core of the formula, his mind would be trapped. Hansen no idea how he had become so much stronger in such a short amount of time, but it had happened, whether he liked it or not. But he still felt it was wrong, and that he would be worse off by improving his power this way. He had not commanded this ascension, and neither had he learned the inner workings of every gene lock. He mastered his own skills and perfected each step of his progression, that was how he always did things. This could put him in danger. He was walking along a path someone else had told him to go on, without knowing where he was going and for what purpose. With the promise of an increase in strength, many would gladly oblige and follow the path. But Hansen was different, if not a little stubborn. He wanted to learn the workings of the world himself, and he wanted to understand the core of his strength through his own means. He liked to command his being and his purpose, not have someone else guide and hold his hand. This is not what I wanted. Hansen cast Blood Pulse Sutra, and with the Dongxian Sutra, tried to fight back against the power. Chapter 1079 Battling Evil With the powers of the Blood Pulse Sutra and the Dongxian Sutra, Hansen tried to suppress and push back the energies that sought to empower him. Had he continued to accept the light and chant of strength, his powers would have grown and developed even further. But Hansen did not want to cheat. He did not want things to be accomplished this way. When the power had almost been pushed out, the person bathed in light on the stone platform turned his attention to Hans Sr. And then, all of a sudden, Hansen's brain felt as if it had been thunderstruck. The demonic language he had been hearing increased in volume, and it boomed inside his head. The light broke through his attempts of defense, penetrating the Dongshan Sutra and the Blood Pulse Sutra. It wasn't only Han Sin's Qi Gong and energy that were being warped by this intrusive power, it was his very genes. They were morphing to the will of the light. Boom. Hansen became a gold raven, and in this form, he activated nine of his gene locks. He wanted to leave this area at once. But even then, Hansen could not move. He felt physically incapable. He couldn't flap his wings or move his legs. The light was forcing its way into his blood and bones, wanting to become a part of his very being. D asterisk a minute. Hansen was unsure whether this entire offering was a good or bad thing. All that mattered were his principles, the same principles that compelled him not to cheat. Hansen had to kick things up a notch, he now acknowledged. With the ignition of all his energy, his hair grew silver and long. His eyes turned white and his body glowed. His holy light merged with the intrusive force. In this form, Hansen could fight back the attempted invasion, but there were still remnant cascades of light rattling around inside him. And yet, try as he might, he could not extinguish or remove these renegade volumes of light. This was the first time he had encountered a power he could not wholly defeat with Super King Spirit Mode. A power had to be supremely wretched in strength to defeat Hansen's Super King Spirit Mode. Hansen thought he was now encountering a super creature that had unlocked 10 gene locks, and that was why his power was proving insufficient. He wanted to leave more than anything, but the eyes of that light-bathed figure were still fixed on him, and the gaze felt physical. The eyes were pinning him in place. The demonic language was deafening, and it began to occupy Hansen's every thought. The light inside him became thicker, like an abhorrent mucus that wanted to drown him. The closer one got to the light, the stronger it would be. But now, Hansen noticed that the overall brightness that surrounded the creature was lesser in volume than his own light. 
Hansen's white light did not cease its battle with the other light, and eventually, it became the more dominant force. But whatever lack of strength the opposing force might have now had, it made up it with persistence and volume. Whenever Hansen was able to break a part of the encroaching light, more would simply take its place. It was exhausting work, and Hansen knew it was something he could not keep up for very long. Hansen might have been able to make a run for it in this form, but he feared he'd be attacked if he left now. It was like he was encountering a hungry wolf. If you fought it, it might end up not biting you. But if you turn tail to flee, it might take advantage of your fear and strike with a deadly attack from behind. If he was attacked by the monster that did this, Hansen reckoned he could not survive it. But he also knew he'd most likely die by remaining there. The power of the evil light felt unlimited in its reserves, and yet, Hansen's super king spirit mode could only last one hour. And if he did end up remaining in this form, fighting back with such effort for the entire duration, he'd be so weak when it was over, he might not even be able to move. Hansen was sweating bullets. He was in quite the predicament, knowing he might not survive whether he chose to fight or flee. The shattered shards of holy light were mounting, and they were now building up inside Hans' senator eventually, they would clog his veins. But Hansen was determined not to give in. He gritted his teeth and focused even harder. The creatures all around were uncaring, and they received the light happily. They were addicted, enjoying the light like they were getting their next fix after a long time jonesing. And what's more, this would only end up with them becoming stronger. With the gene locks of all the creatures behind opening, and the bursts of light that accompanied them, the shelter was obscenely bright right now. Meanwhile, Bauer was still asleep on the back of the sheep, holding her red bird. Dragon King was very much like the other creatures in the area, in that he was merrily accepting the bounty of light. He had more of a reason to, though, as his body had been in an awful state for quite some time. Now, Hansen noticed, the spirit had recovered a bit. Hansen was starting to realize there was nothing he could do, and neither was there anyone else he could rely on for aid. Even summoning disloyal knight would have been useless. The clock was ticking, and Hansen knew he'd have to decide on a course of action before he ended up dying right there. But just as Hansen was about to summon disloyal knight, anyway, a black mist flashed in front of his eyes. It was so fast, Hansen initially believed it to be a trick of his vision. But after the flash, the light was shut off, and the demonic language silenced. Hansen felt the pressure release, and with the accompanying relief, almost collapsed to the ground. Let's go. When they wake up, they will not be happy, Dragon King said. Hansen picked up Bauer and took off running. He used his white light to try to exhaust the remaining light inside. Unfortunately, the active time remaining on his Super King spirit mode depleted, and he was unable to flush it all out of his system. What's worse, the gross volume of light had ended up crystallized inside him. Hansen's face went pale. He was no longer just weak. The crystallized light was actively hurting him and making his situation all the more dire. Chapter 1080 Crystallized Body Hansen was too injured to fly, so he summoned Disloyal Knight and commanded that he pick Hansen up and fly him to safety instead. Hansen had not been physically damaged, but the light had crystallized his organs, veins, muscles, and bones. Without the demonic language, the light could not assimilate with Hansen's body or leave. It was there to stew and go hard, leaving him in a frightening condition. Hansen had not been paralyzed, just made extremely stiff. But what was worse, with his body clogged, something which prohibited the traversal of his energies, he could no longer open any gene locks. Disloyal Knight delivered Hansen back to the statue. There, Hansen frowned and said, Now that I'm injured, how will you get us out of here? Dragon King responded, I couldn't, previously. But now that I have absorbed the ancient devil light, that has changed. I thought you were one of ancient devil's generals. If so, how did he not recognize you in the palace? Hansen was perplexed. Amidst all that he had endured, Dragon King had not disobeyed or betrayed him. Dragon King said, if that was truly ancient devil emperor, I can assure you, you would not be breathing. I have already told you once, he has gone to the fourth god sanctuary. He's been gone a long time. Then who is that, inside the light? Hansen asked. Dragon King explained, it must be Big Mara, left behind by ancient devil emperor. Big Mara? Hansen asked. Dragon King said, using his own genes, he created a doppelganger. A tulpa of himself, born from a geno seed. The doppelganger is not as smart, 
but the power is fairly comparable. I am unsure why it is still here, though, having taken the Emperor's place all this time. To think it is still conducting these geno tests. Dragon King then looked at Han Sen and said, It may only be a doppelganger, but the light was as real as it gets. Why did you not accept it and become stronger? Instead, you let yourself end up in quite the condition. That's personal, and it doesn't matter anymore. You said you could get us out of here. Can we go yet? Hansen didn't want to talk about it. No matter how beneficial the light might have been, it was not something Hansen wanted. To him, it might as well have been poison. Dragon King spat out some light, similar to what Big Mara had done. He took that light, which was thick and creamy, and wiped it on his eyeballs. Then, with bright gleaming eyes, Dragon King said, By using this ancient devil light, I can guide us through the black mist that traps us here. If we avoid the dimensional tears, we can make our way out of Devil's Realm. This squirt of light is the only one I have, so we need to get out now. If this runs out, we won't have another chance. Disloyal Knight continued carrying Hansen, and they both followed behind Dragon King. Unfortunately, Dragon King was very slow, so to increase their pace, he hopped onto Disloyal Knight for a ride. 2. The creatures had yet to leave the shelter that was high above, so their journey was not plagued or hindered by any monstrous intrusions. Disloyal Knight continued at a hasty pace, allowing itself to be guided by Dragon King's directions. Just as his light grew dim, though, they saw a different light up ahead. It was the light of the exit, and so they hurried towards it, relieved to be free of that place. The sun was bright, and ahead of them was a large, sprawling forest. Looking behind them, all they saw was a black mist. That was lucky. Dragon King then sighed. If he had a body, he'd have been sweating all over. Hansen asked, If you were one of those generals, you should have been familiar with those creatures. Why were you so afraid then? Dragon King said, Afraid? Me? No. Your imagination surely goes places. Hansen did not push the matter, as Dragon King clearly did not want to tell him. They picked a random direction to travel in the hopes of reaching a shelter. If they discovered a shelter, they could find out which region they were in. Dragon King was one of the eight generals, and now, he was swiftly guiding Han Sen to a shelter. When they came across one, it was a night shelter that looked abandoned. I hope the teleporter is still functional, Hansen said. If it isn't, that's okay. We can always go and find another shelter. Following the war, all the shelters in a 50,000 mile radius of us should be abandoned, Dragon King said. What happened in this war? Hansen asked. Um, let's go and see if the teleporter still works, shall we? Dragon King obviously didn't want to hawk about it. Hansen dismounted Disloyal Knight and staggered inside the shelter. He was able to walk, and his powers were still there inside him. He just couldn't make use of them. Fortunately, the teleporter was in fine condition. Hansen left Disloyal Knight behind and returned to the Alliance. Hansen was unable to use the Blood Pulse Sutra or the Dongshan Sutra, so he had to return to the Alliance and heal. When he checked himself into the hospital, the results of his condition were dire. Some of his organs, veins, muscles, and bones had been wholly crystallized, and even some of his blood had suffered the same result. The professional surgeons that examined him said there was nothing they could do for him, and that removal of the crystals was impossible. If the crystallization had only affected a few of his organs, they could have easily been swapped out, but 90% of his body was crystallized. Even his brain had crystallized. If they replaced all the organs, they might as well have built a brand new person.